Hi guys, it's me, Alex, and of course we are on the mission to give you knowledge about freight and transportation. Hopefully you guys are following us on all the platforms. As many of you know, we have YouTube, our biggest platform there. That's where you can find lots and lots of information. Of course, our students have to actually re-watch some of our content over and over because I want to make sure they understand the principles of logistics. Look at this, our current student, Eliana, finally new live. Yes, Eliana, it is finally a new live, but I'll see you tomorrow in a class. And why I'm doing this? Actually, to help out for the students in February class and previous students because today, it's going to be a very important topic. Hopefully, you actually have a good sound. Thank you, Eliana, for reconfirming that you guys can hear me well. And let's see, what are we guys going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to go through terminology, some principles, and we're actually going to be talking about power-only trucking glossaries, terms you need to understand and no. Let me see which mode I like the best. Maybe this one. So you guys can still read. You can still see me. So let's start doing. Of course, make sure you like, make sure you share, maybe take the notes. But I suggest you to come back and rewatch it again and actually figure out uh, the way. What is the best way are you learning? Is it easier for you just to rewatch a few times? Is it easier for you to rewatch and take the notes? Or is it easier for you to get the principle and then go and research? Of course, we are doing this and I want to make sure that my students, uh, current students, previous students, always find the resources. And I love Coyote. Because Coyote Logistics has a lots and a lots of articles. They have a lots and a lots of data. And it's free. You don't have to have the load board. You can go to their website, to the resources. And you can actually search by the topics. Very good explanation. So whatever we're going to be covering today, guys, I am actually taking from their resource. And I will explain to you uh, how how to understand that information, what the difference some terminology makes, and my own expertise, when is it going to work, what do you need to know as a new dispatcher. So let's go, but again, this a lot of information comes from their article, so I am resourcing it from actually their website. One more time, this is the resources, coyote.com, and they have a bunch of, bunch of topics. So let's go back to my little power point because I will share this with my students uh, so they can rewatch and actually read. So let's see who is here. Of course, Svatoslav is watching. Yes, he's a good Ukrainian kid who is going to be a pro dispatcher, right? <laughs> and she's even asking, did you do the homework? Did you finish all the homework? Well, I think he's a responsible person, and yes, he is going to finish his homework. Well, hello, and greetings, peace, and grace, and abundance. Thank you guys for supporting me. Maybe we will choose the different mode because when I put the comments, I actually cover it myself. But right now, let's go through the glossary. So what does it mean, power-only trucking? Well, first, we're going to go through different terminology. And I want you to actually understand, you know what? Actually, I do need to change. I do need to change uh, the way uh, I represent myself on the screen. Okay. So first, there is a different types of power only, right? So let's start with the first one. A lot of times as a dispatcher, you talk to the broker or you go to website. I mean, I uh, not website, load board. Let's say uh, that one. Let's say truck stop. 
maybe Coyote, maybe GB Hunt, maybe TQL. And you have the co- little comment there and says, it's going to be drop trailer. So what does it mean, the drop trailer? What what is this, what is What makes it different, for example, from trailer pools? What, what is, why is it different from drop and hook? So let's start. So drop trailer, usually, then when you, as a carrier, you have your own trailer. So where's my trailer? Here's my baby reefer trailer, my favorite trailer. He's been around for a long time, guys. This trailer is actually... 10 years old because I use it. I use I, I used to have it on my desk and now I'm using it for my classes. So because I can show different things about my baby reefer, right? So drop trailer. Carrier owns the trailer. You can own the reefer. You can own the drive-in. You can own maybe flatbed. But usually this is drive-in, reefer, containers, right? You guys gonna go. And you guys gonna move the freight. Again, it can be directly with the shippers. In that case, you will need to make sure you go direct, you have the contract, you need to make sure you have capacity of equipment. When we are talking about capacity of equipment, that means that you, as a carrier, cannot have just one, two, three, four trailers. Ratio should be probably way higher if you want to service this lane. But usually, why does shipper like this option drop trailer? Well, because this is your trailer. They don't have to buy it. They don't really have to maintain it. They don't have to park it. So they don't have to invest this much money. They will compensate you, hopefully, hopefully, if you understand how to negotiate this for extra time on your shipping. Or receiving side. So draft trailer allows the customer to load or unload trailer at their convenience. But here is the problem for the small carriers. Let's say, let me remove this. Sorry, guys, what's going on? Oh, I have to switch. You know what? I need to delete some of those settings. Too many on a stream yard. Okay. So let's say. I have Mr. Kamolov, who actually is a student, and he is dispatching the trucks. He goes on the load board, and he sees it's a drop trailer. First, he needs to ask broker. Well, drop trailer, when we pick up the load or when we deliver the load? And sometimes it can be on the both sides. And a lot of times, drop trailer, it's not extra four hours. It's not extra 10 hours. It's not even 24 hours. Sometimes they want you to drop trailer for four days, six days, seven days. So let's say he's a pro dispatcher. He's dispatching the guy, he, which is a small carrier, who only has this trailer. Does it make sense for him to go and drop this trailer for three days at pickup and wait for loading, and then maybe drive 1,000 miles and then drop the trailer again for 48 hours. The situations are different. Let's say exactly for today, let's pretend that his driver is somewhere in Cleveland, Ohio. First, maybe he does not have hours on his HOS cycle, and he needs to do restart. And in this case, the load says, well, we need to drop trailer for 24 to 48 hours, then you can pick up. So what would be Mr. Kamalov doing as a pro dispatcher? Well, in this case, it works for his driver because he can go home if he lives there, or maybe he's going to hotel, or maybe he just sits in his truck and actually waiting for 34-hour restart. His job is going to be negotiate this because they have to compensate you, right? They don't know that you don't have uh, hours to drive anyway. They don't know that your driver lives there. So as a pro dispatcher, you will never spill the truth. By saying that, you have to make it sound that, you know what? This really has to be compensated. How many other drivers are going to drop the trailer? 
So if the broker is willing to pay you extra and it works for this case, you can go ahead and book this load. Pay attention. For pickup, it was working. But what if now he needs to drive and wait again two, three days? Well, drop-off should not be the same. It should be appointment or first come, first serve. So in this scenario, it kind of works. Still a lot of details. You need to make sure they're not lying to you. You need to verify. And a lot of times, even if you book the load, I would make one phone call to shipper and to receiver. And a lot of times broker tells you, well, it's going to be 24 hours drop off. You call the shipper. You say, well, we are actually dropping our trailer, which you're going to be loading. Do you know how long does it take? And believe it or not, you're going to be surprised 85 to 90% of the time because you're going to figure out that the broker is lying to you already because the shipper is going to say, well, usually it depends how busy we are or if they are making some product and they just put in few pallets and then just need more time to put another few pallets, right? They say, well, it can take from 48 hours to five days. In this case, even if you book the load, make sure you call back broker and actually cancel this load because it does not make any sense. And how are you going to do it? Well, you're going to do it by saying, I'm a pro dispatcher. I am doing my job. Since we are under hours of service regulations, I need to make sure I verify the pickup, how long it's going to take the drop off. And again, a lot of brokers are going to get pissed. They're going to say, you cannot call our customers. Again, I'm teaching you to stick to your guts and tell, I understand, but I need to make sure my carrier, my driver does not get stuck. I am doing my job as a pro dispatcher. Do you have a problem with that? And usually, if you have confidence in your voice, believe it or not, well, they understand that they were lying to you from the beginning. And that's why be very careful with drop trailers because you actually dropping your own equipment another hand would you like somebody to use your equipment move it around for a few days they don't pay attention to equipment they don't care if they scratch it or they do something so please drop trailers can only work can only work for the company listen carefully, that is mega carrier and who has the capacity of extra trailers. If you all remember, we had a guest last year and he actually draw, does this option and he is located in Palatine and they have a lot of reefers and how he finds the customer who pays more because he has extra trailers and the ratio should be one to three. So if you have 20 trucks, you should have at least 60 trailers. So in this case, he's charging extra money because his local guys are dropping the trailers. He doesn't care if it takes two, three days, but he makes sure that he gets compensated. Actually, he is doing it with reefers which is actually even smaller niche, right? So he found his niche and hopefully this is the only way he's surviving nowadays in this market. So as a dispatcher, you have to understand what does it mean drop trailer. The main thing, this is your trailer. You pay attention to the terms. You need to make sure does it make sense or it does not make sense. Let's go to the next one. Well, what does it mean trailer pools, okay, or drop pools? This is a different terminology and different principle and logic behind this. So drop pools, this is when a carrier drops multiple trailers at a customer location. So this is kind of an example which I just gave you. 
when you have extra equipment, right? So in this case, you don't care because you have extra trailers. And for you to actually succeed, one more time, ratio should be at least one to three, not one to 1.5. 50 trucks, 150 trailers. So that's what it means. So shippers and receivers facilities, they will actually have the carriers with extra trailers. And that's why they are willing to pay more because they know, for example, that it takes longer for them to load. Let's say they are making, I don't know, some, um, um, I, I don't know, some paper inserts, right? And there is a production line, or they make it, maybe they are making fresh chips or something, or they are making fresh cheese, but it takes time. They need probably 48 hours, maybe 72 hours to finish all this production or manufacturing or whatever they are doing in this case. Why they want carriers with extra trailers? They want to find carriers with what? With pools of the trailers. They are willing to pay. And a lot of people are going to ask, so why the shippers don't just go and buy their own trailers? Because again, this is too much of investment. How much each trailer costs? Then you need to maintain, then you need to have insurance, then you need to have parking. So that's why they are looking for carriers or they are looking for brokers who can do what? Brokers who can find carriers with extra equipment. And that's what it means. Trailer pools, drop pools. Okay, let's go to other mode. Drop and hook. And probably everybody understands the meaning of this who is the biggest on the market right now who does drop and hook one more time this is when carrier brings in a trailer loaded or unloaded to shipping or receiving location drops it hooks it with another trailer right so drop and hook is can be both ways Shippers can have their own trailers. Let's say the biggest example is Amazon. So Amazon has their own trailers, right? You just come there. It's already preloaded. You pick up your this trailer. You need to make sure you have a coverage trailer interchange because you need to make sure you have coverage in case if you do damage that. But this is not your trailer. You actually not bringing somebody else trailer. All those trailers are owned by Amazon. So this is drop and hook, right? Hopefully we guys understand this. Well, let's think about it. You are a carrier and you really want to have this option. Let's pretend you have 10, 15 trucks. For you to succeed with this, you need to have more trailers. How many companies can afford and buy extra 20 trailers? So that's why some companies use leasing option. They go and it depends on the peak season, when market goes up due to holidays, due to season, due to other circumstances, instead of buying, they go and they make lease agreements, right? So we also have to understand what does it mean trailer leasing? So we need extra equipment. We cannot afford to go and buy another 50 trailers. Why? Because it's not going to make sense. You have to understand efficiency, profitability, and how much money is going to be left after you go and buy. And a lot of companies, they don't have enough credit to go and purchase, for example, 30 trucks with a down payments, again, with a cost of insurance. and that. So that's why they go and they lease equipment to make sure that they can use this opportunity. So, so far, trailer leasing. You have to understand why people go and lease extra 10 dry vans, for example, during the winter. Which company? Good example would be flatbed companies. Flatbed companies, market goes down. Market goes down probably in the beginning of November. 
market is not going back till beginning of the March. So what are we talking? November, December, January, February, March, April. So usually people who list trailers A have options, month to month, three months, six months. In this case, if you're a good negotiator, if you know how to make deal, I would do only months to months because we never know. Maybe market's going to go back in April. Maybe market's going to go back in March, but approximately March, that's when the flatbeds, canistogas are start going back. While well, drivers still want to drive, but there's not enough freight and prices are lower. So company takes the lease, right? Now they can still make money and they have extra trailers. Do they want to keep them? No, they do not. So after it's done, they give it back. They run their operations for flatbed, Conestogas, and then the winter comes, they do it again. Okay? So this is your tray leasing. Let's see if you guys understand what the seven-day loadout means. Remember, it's going to say you post power only, you open actually posting, and it says it's going to be seven-day loadout. It's very simple. It can go from seven to ten days. Usually, if they offer you seven days, ask if you can push to ten days. But let's understand this. So in this case, let's say third-party PL, TQL has a customer and they want to move trailers, let's say from Lafayette, Indiana, where they may uh, make Wabash drive vans trailers, and they need to bring them to different dealers all over the country. Well, they don't really have enough pro drivers. They don't have their trucks to move this, right? They are asking somebody to take this trailer and bring it to certain destination, but they're giving option for you to do what? to use it for 7, 10 days. So loadout trailer, it is different than drop and hook because drop and hook, they already have freight there. You just move in somebody's trailer for compensation. Again, Amazon, UPS, FedEx, GB Hunt, Schneider is the best example, right? In this case, what do you have to ask as a dispatcher? Well, first, you need to know what type of trailer they are giving you, right? Starting with simple. Is it going to be dry van? Is it going to be reefer? If that's reefer, is that really a working reefer? Because a lot of times this is not working reefer because the unit is not working or whatever is a chance. So if you think that it's going to be easy to find the dry loads for the reefer, well, not that easy because again, weight, the way the reefer is built, so it's going to be harder for you to move your power only unit if you take reefer loadout without working unit. Plus, again, if your company is not a reefer company, you do not have reefer breakdown, right? So then you need to get a reefer breakdown to get the reefer load. Does it make sense for seven, 10 days? Unless you guys do it all the time, then yes. What else you need to know? You need to know the specifications about that trailer. Is it going to be swing doors, roll-up doors? Is it plated trailer? Is it wooden floors? So everything that you know about equipment, you need to specify. Pay attention. Usually those loadout trailers, if we go back eight years ago, not even eight, maybe six years ago, they used to pay $350, $400 for you to move it, let's say, from Chicago to Los Angeles. You had seven days, so you could have went, get the load on top of that $400, $450. Nowadays, with this market, with brokers and shippers and receivers and whoever needs to move that equipment, they understand that there is no in uh, that we have shortage of the trailers. They pay you zero, zero. So you're not making any money, but you're putting liability on your carrier. Because still, you need to pick up this in Chicago. You can use it for seven days, but when you drop this trailer, it has to be in a good condition. Plus, 
to the big node, you cannot be late because usually the trade confirmation with a zero comp with a zero compensation has a lot of stipulations. If you guys are gonna be late, we charge you 250 per day. So pay attention, book realistic loads. If you have breakdown of your truck, let's say, and you decide to go all the way to West Coast and you only guy with one truck. Can you picture then $250, $200 per day charge for five, six days? Well, so you have to be careful. But that's what it means, that you can use the trailer for seven or 10 days. There's going to be another good advice for you. The broker, usually good broker, they want you to make sure that you take that video around the trailer, inside of the trailer. Make sure you do so because what's going to happen? Lots of times this trailer already was moved from one location to another. And if they did not catch the scratches or anything else from previous carrier, well, it can go against your insurance. So your driver has to pay attention. You need to take pictures. You need to take videos and you'd better send it to the broker. Here's the condition we get in this trailer. Please make sure you do this. So now we know that we have seven-day loadout trailer. Again, it can be drive-in, it can be reefer, it can be, it can be other equipment, but usually it's drive-in or reefer. Sometimes flatbeds, sometimes flatbeds. I don't see that much of the specialty equipment because for them it doesn't make sense. Sometimes they just pay to move trailer, right? They just want you to pick up and move the empty trailer if they don't want no damages. So companies who maybe purchase this trailer, so let's say I am a carrier or maybe I'm a company who got the equipment, but I don't have enough pro drivers. I don't want to deal with it. So I call Coyote, I call TQL and I say, well, we need to bring our 10 trailers. Can you please Find the carrier who is going to bring our brand new trailer. We don't want them to load because we don't want no damage. We just need to move from A to B for compensation. In this case, they will pay you. There is going to be price. So you're going to actually just move empty trailer. Can you go and book the load? No, no, and no. Because if this is not load out option, you cannot think that you can oversmart them and on a way put some other cargo because it's actually not a not a good situation. Although in trucking people think that they are so smart and they just can go behind and and they just scam brokers because they think they're so clever. Well guys, you actually gonna have claim, you actually break in that contract, that rate confirmation. So please don't do that. Just make sure if that's an option you negotiating as a dispatcher that it makes sense. And what makes sense in trucking? If you still making profit, rate per mile, right? Where are you going from? Does it make sense for your driver to do it? Then you go and and book this load. Okay. So let's go back one more time. So what is a power only trucking? Well, that means that you have truck. Where is my truck? You have only this unit, power only, right? This beautiful truck. Um, okay, what is it? Freightliner? Okay, maybe you have this beautiful truck, right? You do not have any equipment. So one more time, this is power only trucking. How are we going to post it? P-O, right? Let me, you know what? Let me go. Let me actually go. And I will go on Coyote Load Board. Since they have this article, let's see how many power only loads they have. So if you're interested in certain location, tell me. But of course, I always start with my favorite city, Chicago, because you guys know that I love Chicago. I would never move out of Chicago. Chicago stole my heart a long time ago. So this is my second home. Actually, it's probably my first home now since I've been here uh, long, longer than I was in Ukraine. 
finally, you know, I I I moved to that. So I've be, I've been in Chicago longer than I've been in my own country. So let's see. Power only. Okay. I put next seven days just to see what's gonna happen. So you have all of this stuff. Look at this. In this case, I log into the carrier who does not have that many trucks, just for example. So what does it say? Well, you need to make sure before you book this, you have to finish Coyote's non-own equipment service agreement. Well, why Coyote wants to do that? Because they want to make sure that you have that extra coverages for that trailers and that you agree to certain things. So if your carrier, if you log in to their load board and you see this, well, this is something you can manage. You just need to make sure you contact the uh, Coyote and you say, well, guys, we would really like to work with your power only. Can we actually sign that agreement? Is it possible to do? Yes, of course it's possible to do. Let's go to this. For example, in this case, what are they offering us? You know what? Maybe I will just move myself so we can see bigger screen. So in this case, they are telling you, well, this is multi-stop. They are actually picking up in Loves, Illinois. And look, it comes back in Loves, Illinois, right? Loves Park, Illinois. So let's see what's going on. This is going to be power only. This is a actually food gray, a gray trailer. This is already has a weight. This is tells you where is it going to go. And first you're going to go where? Well, you pick it up here. It says preloaded trailer power only. Must return trailer to Love Spark, Illinois after delivery can use the trailer for backhaul. So first, they are telling you, right? Well, first, we're going to make sure that you do what we want you to do. First, you're going to go pick up preloaded trailer. You're going to drop off in Ohio. Then you gonna guys gonna go where? From Ohio, you can actually use it for your own, and you have to bring it back empty. So do you see how it can work? So they can put any stipulations. If that makes sense for you, in this case, are you gonna do it for zero dollars? Or you need to be compensated to go to Ohio. So in this case, I guess we are talking about what? 890 miles. We are actually going to strict facility in Grove, Ohio. So this is actually picking up on 20th, which is um, uh, February 20th. You have to be in Ohio, which day? On the 22nd. You do have appointment, so you have two-day transit for 890 miles. Does it make sense? Okay, it makes sense. One and they have transit, so you figure that out. How much is it going to cost? Well, you need to see how much is everybody paying from Illinois to Ohio. And if they can pay you rate, then what other option you have? You can still use this trailer for a few more days and then return it for that part. They're going to pay you zero, but they have to compensate you for this preloaded trailer. Actually, this is a really good example, right? So this was a little bit different. Okay, let's open this one. You can pick up in, if you guys signed that agreement, you can pick up in Menon, Indiana, and you have to bring to what? To Georgia. So let's see. They're going to tell you that it's going to be load out trailer. Wow, load out trailer. So that means that you're picking up and you need to bring to extra lease Atlanta by the notice. And look at this. 
if you're gonna be late, they're gonna charge you $50 per day. And you have to deliver this within five business days. So this case, this is a great example of empty trailer. So do you see the difference? The first scenario was actually a little bit complicated, especially for the newbies, right? You go, you pick up reloaded trailer, you have to deliver to Ohio, bring back to Illinois that trailer empty, but you can use it for a few days, right? Because they don't want to compensate you for bringing it empty. They're like, okay, we're going to pay you zero, use it, bring on time. Second scenario, you have five days. So how many days does it take to get to Georgia if you're picking up in Indiana? Well, probably a day and a half. So how many loads can you do? Can you take this trailer? In this case, it's a dry van. Let's think logically. Can you take this trailer and book the long haul going somewhere to California? No, no, and no, because you have to bring this within five days. Can you take this trailer and go all the way to East Coast, let's say from Indiana all the way to Massachusetts, Connecticut, and end up in Georgia within five days? No, no, and no. So what is the logical thinking right here? If I'm picking up in Indiana, I can only do regional, probably Midwest run, and then go south. Because look at this. Every day, they're going to charge you $50 extra. Plus, probably, when you receive all of this, it's going to be other stipulation. And one of them, look at this. They have already specified that your driver must have signed inspection forms, right? And he needs to verify that he is taking the good condition trailer and he brings without no damages, right? So this is your power only, okay? Let's take 30 second break. I will be answering your questions and then we're going to see why people use this app. So let's answer this question, right? Power only carriers versus the regular truckload carriers. Hopefully, I'm going back to the same explanation. Every carrier can become a power only carrier, even if they have their own trucks. Let's say their trailers are in maintenance. Let's say, again, this is a seasonal changes. So instead of going and buying different trailers or leasing, they can become power-only carrier. If, of course, you want to work, for example, with Amazon, there is a lot of things you need, you have to apply for Amazon, become their Amazon relay carrier. You need to have certain insurance. You have to be approved, right? You have to be six months of active MCs. Your safety has to be satisfied factory uh, you need to make sure you have all the coverage but still an easy process with amazon it's different because you do click 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 there is no really negotiations to make sure that you got the best load well you have to be there a preferred carrier right how do you get there by your performance not canceling the loads not being late doing everything because they track all this so usually amazon carriers who have a good drivers who are responsible what they do they get better loads. Why? Because they see them faster. And that was a smart on the Amazon behalf to set up like this. So that's why a lot of times, and remember guys, you have to be Amazon relay carried to go and book. When you see, when you see all the advertisements, especially in my favorite Telegram groups. Oh, we have the Amazon load. We have an Amazon load. Book with us. We have Amazon load, guys. It's a simple double brokering. That means that somebody has MC. They establish a good report with Amazon. They have a good score. They book a bunch of loads. 
and they double brokering for you a lot of times it's not covered by your insurance if something's gonna go wrong well you're gonna have problems so this is actual example of double brokering nobody can have amazon loads if you directly are not going to amazon account and you approved by amazon so all of this nonsense is illegal scamming double brokering do people do this yes they do also what do they do they have two different three different mcs they keep one uh on booking amazon loads but then when they drive they actually put under other mc why because they want to make sure that their safety stays uh up to the uh, in a good good threshold right so amazon is not blocking them is that happening happening all the times maybe you know what maybe we should do how people scam amazon why now amazon kind of getting back to getting rid of the bad apples but again remember amazon is a business the moment the market's gonna flip they're gonna change their requirements because they make billions of dollars don't you think that they know that you are a uh, double bo broker don't you think they know that you're taking team loads when you only have one dryer they made the new rules they know all that but the bigger pictures they still want to make their billions and billions so they are closing their eyes legal or illegal they know that they're gonna get paid by insurance they will make sure that they will be compensated but we're not talking about amazon right now we are actually talking what modes actually work with a power only so let's say i have 10 trucks can i be power only carrier and truck load carrier at the same time yes of course let's say i have five guys who don't have trailers and they say alex i want to work with amazon if you have amazon account or i want to actually use the loadout option or drop and hook option and it can be different brokers not just amazon let's say coyote let's say gb Han, schneider ups fedex is that make sense for me as an owner of the trucking company well yes if the guy is willing to do so why not some owner operators come to me and they have their equipment and for example he's like no i just want to work with a dry van okay can i still hire him yes he i can find the loads for him for dry when some people come and say well i have reefer can i add him yes i need to make sure i have reefer breakdown but in this case let's be logical if i have 10 dry vans and i have let's say five power only and i have one guy who comes with a reefer would it make sense for me to even bother to add reefer breakdown insurance and totally work with a totally different market because i need to know the produce i need to pay more attention so probably not so as a smart trucking company i would say you know what actually no i cannot really hire you i don't want you to come to my company because you're going to be only one reefer it doesn't make sense for me to add the reefer breakdown to the company and maybe as a dispatcher i am not that familiar with reefer market because in the end of the day every market is different right for power only for dry vans for flatbeds for conestogers for reefers and can you dispatch all types of equipment well you have to be pretty pretty good because you have to understand it's different negotiations different prices different seasonal changes so can i dispatch uh all equipment probably not all can i learn how to do it yes if i know specifications would i be proficient if i have two step decks one flat bed three reefers then i have containers then i have power only let's say we're talking about eight trucks with four different modes can i do that probably but would i do a good job no no and no one person cannot actually dispatch good different types of uh trailers at the same time so pay attention to that if you want to work with the drive-in concentrate on drive-in if you're really good with the reefers concentrate with the reefers if you are good with flatbed step decks then take all that type of equipment if you're good with clicking 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 and killing amazon then 
keep killing Amazon because <laughs> nothing we can do to prevent that, right? We have too many people who just click, click, click without even understanding what they click and without even understanding profitability, without even seeing, does it make sense for my company to do this Amazon routes, right? So there's a lot of things you need to consider, but let's keep going. It's Friday. So according to Coyote, look at this. They are telling us that according to their 500 shippers, 64% of the big shippers are actually want to use drop trailer option. And one more time, it goes back to logical principle. Why? Because they probably making something manufacturing and they really need those trailers on their property and simply they're using it as a free warehousing. Let's think about the reefers. When you drop off the reefers, let's say you go to the dairy production. What are they doing? They are using your reefer as a free warehousing. Do you understand this? Instead of building another building where they can have cold storages, what they do, they have 10 reefers, which are going to be dropped for 48 to 72 hours working, right? Maintaining temperature. And they are putting their fresh yogurt that they are making. So they're in the process of making that yogurt. They made six pallets. They put in 10, re uh, 10 reefers. They make another six pallets. They put. So that's why, guys, as a dispatcher, you need to understand first you are already investing in extra trailers even if you listen to them this is extra expense you actually need to make sure that you get compensated and this is the biggest part of you understanding this logical principles okay let's look at this power only plus trailer leasing so in this case, again, we are combining power only trucking with lease trailers. We're not buying them. We are leasing. And in this market, I'm giving you my opinion. I'm telling you, lease months to months. We still did not come back with the rates. Our rate per mile is still low. Market is not really switching. It's not going to magically change to better. So we're still going through survival mode. So if you ever think about adding extra equipment, make sure you negotiate one month to month option. Don't go to one year contract. Even six months in this market can play not uh, into your favor. What else? So why would brokers, because some brokers, third-party PLs, they actually have their own trailers, which they can provide to shippers and receivers, right? Of course, this is a different agreement, but why? Because we have peak seasons, right? For example, due to the holidays, maybe we have weekend surges so they need exactly for saturday sunday maybe some special projects right for example uh, i don't know some facilities moving from california to texas right because a lot of businesses are moving let's say tesla is moving all their stuff from california to texas so maybe coyote tql is dealing with this is tesla gonna buy extra trailers no but after consideration, the broker says, well, we can make money on this. We can go and list these trailers. Of course, we're going to charge Tesla or whoever. And then we're going to give this option to the carrier who does not have trailer. So in the end, it's all about making profit. But usually when people do that, when we have some holidays, when we have unusual things happen, when actually we are building something new and we know that for the next six months we will need to bring stuff there because somebody is building the huge, huge uh, facility, right? So comes back to what? Making money, okay? What else? 
power only plus private fleet. Again, private fleet having their own extra equipment. Okay? So, what does it give it to you? All this power only, all this extra stuff. What actually does it give to brokers, to carriers? Well, first, it gives you what? Flexibility, right? So, for the broker, for the shipper, it gives them flexibility. They can take longer time. They can actually do more complex uh, shipping, right? So they satisfy the needs. Also, uh, versatility and scalability because you can grow your business, right? With what? With having extra equipment, with actually moving more freight, with charging more. The main thing is you have to charge for this because you actually providing totally different service you giving your equipment right or you wasting more time or you actually satisfying totally different needs than just moving loaded truck and trailer so hopefully guys you learned something because uh, you know i usually think that we can go really fast but <laughs> time flies so let's answer some question uh, and let's say hi to people. Hello. Hello. I see my students. I am the owner, operator. Well, congratulations. You are the big boss. You are owner, operator. Hello, Mr. Aliyev. Thank you. I don't know who it is, but Alex, you look amazing. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm going backwards like Benjamin Button. You know, I'm going older, but I'm looking younger, right? <laughs> Amazon. So we had a question, remember, about who uses drop and hook. Amazon. Good job. This is my student and another student. Who knows? Because he probably deals with Amazon right now. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for liking. Hello, Alex, my favorite Mr. Lincoln. I am doing great. As you see, full of energy. A little bit cold in Chicago today, but sunny. Okay. Diane is here. And hello, Tanya from Florida. So, guys, any questions on actually this topic? Before I will look at your uh, comments, I just want you to remind that we added this basic freight dispatching crash course, right? And it's going to be only two days. One more time. It is basic dispatching course. So this is for people who may be a drivers and they just want to see this side of the dispatching. How does it work? Paperwork, types of equipment, an introduction to load boards. If you not sure that you want to become a dispatcher and you do not want to invest in a full training, maybe this would be the good option. In two days, I am not going to be able to make you a pro dispatcher because it's you need way more information. So please, when you guys sign up, don't look just at the price because this is $299. This is a two days class. It's going to be eight hours. You still need to pre-read, but there are going to be no homework. There's going to be no actually quizzes. We are still going to do it live. We are still going to have a lot of practice. But again, this is just for people who want to see, can I be a dispatcher if I am a driver? Do I want to be a dispatcher? Do I really like this process? So this is a training for people who just want to get basics, like beginning, A, B, C. Because when you sign up for our full class, you're not just getting A, B, C. You go to A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Hopefully, we'll get to the end of the alphabet. If you finish in your homeworks, your assignments, if you rewatch, if you listen to me, and you go and start reading other resources so the full class is totally different please uh, understand this because a lot of people sign up and they think that they are getting the same training as 
my students, okay? So any questions? I'm a pro dispatcher. Okay, welcome pro dispatcher. <laughs> Another student, well, you are going to be a pro dispatcher. I like that that you willing to become a pro dispatcher but remember if you've been watching me how long it's gonna take you it's gonna take you 12 months because you have to relieve all the seasons all the holidays you need to make sure you deal with all type of loading modes uh different negotiations so yes you will be a pro dispatcher but it's gonna take you at least 12 months but i do like that right <laughs> josh mclean well guys for my students i'll see you tomorrow in a class for my safety students finally we are finishing our safety and compliance class so that's it miss alex is not gonna give you extra pdfs extra homeworks extra assignments for everybody else hopefully you're learning Hopefully you like our content. Please like, comment, share, stay positive. Knowledge is the key to your success. And remember that our core mission is to give knowledge. And knowledge comes from different resources, from YouTube, from TikTok, from simply Googling that shit on your own, right? Yes, I know. Sometimes I use a bad words because I want to make sure that you understand I'm the same person like you, real, down to earth, but you need to put an effort. I'm giving you all this information. I guess what? I want to see tomorrow how many students are going to go to Coyote and actually start reading that resources and actually telling me, Alex, this is way more information that I wanted to deal with. But I guess what? You have the whole 12 months to become that pro dispatcher, right? So I am helping you and I am going to make sure that you guys are going to be busy. I'll see you soon. And one more time, like, share, comment, subscribe.